just having this historical background while you're out climbing where you can put the area that you're climbing in and that you're walking around into context, like how, how it formed and what type of rock it is, really makes it seem more meaningful. I'm Tom Calake and I'm a geology professor at Rocky Mountain College. I've been climbing in the Bozeman area since 1980. You know, trees and mountains and things like this seem to draw people. Why should they know about geology? Maybe they would understand a little bit more about the impacts they have. Because they spend time out here, they're like I was. They're just curious, right? I mean, curiosity is a wonderful thing. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Manoa Ainu'u. Today we are climbing out in the Gallatin Canyon on uh, some really good gneiss, which is a metamorphic rock that is formed through heat and pressure. Once all that rock is uplifted, it cools down and it forms this beautiful rock with a lot of foliation and different minerals that you can see veins and bands of. Uh, I am Ryan. I'm gonna do that again. Do another take. Hey, I'm Ryan. Uh, we're out here climbing, climbing some rocks. Well, you you don't want to take your nice for granite, and because uh, it's it is it is granite, but it's not. It's it's different. No, <laughs> not some of them were igneous originally, but some, a lot of them weren't actually. They were actually mudstones, and there's even some sandstones, and see a lot of these were sediments. And it melts and it, and it, and it folds. So it's not melting, just simply recrystallizes. And then, uh, and then, you know, one day, you know, a little river is like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna, gonna snake my way through here, and then it's just gonna show all that pretty rock. So that's good stuff. So the nices that we see here, were deformed and metamorphosed, probably in tectonic collisions of some sort. Let's say they're kind of moving apart at mid-ocean ridges, and they also collide and subduct beneath one another. The zone we we're at today was the Gallatin Tower. There's a lot of joints. The geological term for, for cracks is joints. So it forms all these different cracks when the rock is you know, being uplifted that make it really good for crack climbing for us to jam our hands and fingers and arms and bodies in. It makes the entire experience uh, more well-rounded. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty great stuff. Yeah. Uh, hey, cheers to that. Cheers, one. yeah, yeah. For the most part of the Paleozoic, we're under ocean water. Marine setting, just the right conditions for depth and seawater chemistry. Limestone's made of fossils and dead shit. <laughs> well, that's, no, actually, but it is, it can be comprised of fossils, but the dead stuff technically is long gone, right? means they would be replaced by something in order to become fossilized. Hi, I'm Carly. I like climbing. So we're out at Hellgate Gulch, which is in the middle of Montana. And behind us is the winter wall, which is now just getting shade, but in the winter months and in early spring, it's some of the first places that we can go sporty sport climbing. Limestone, you know, is calcium carbonate. It just precipitates out of the water column and, and settles to the ocean floor. Calcium comes from breakdown of minerals from the continent. And that's dissolved and carried in, you know, by streams and rivers and into the ocean. So if you've ever dove on a coral reef, a biological limestone factory. So it can take lots of different colors and forms, sometimes more like a peanut butter color and sometimes more like a charcoal color.
Limestone climbing is just unique. On this wall particularly that we're standing right in front of, there's like just a lot of routes that are very cryptic, so you have to kind of like find the holds. Maybe they're not immediately obvious. But you're like, oh, in that exact position, it actually kind of works, so that's kind of cool. all the way through the Cretaceous period till 60, 65 million years ago. We have this collision going on like this, right? The plate, for some reason, we think adopted a much shallower angle of subduction, wasn't really doing this anymore. And it was kind of more of a collision. Plates, plates are up thrusting things. My name is Janine Dalmata. I'm a fourth generation Montanan from up on the highland. We skied a line called the Fat Maid in the Northern Gallatin. It's one of the more accessible couloirs in this area. You have to be focused on what you're doing and you can't fall. Couloirs are sporty. <laughs> This thing here, there's still collision taking place, but magnetism stops for a period of time. And then these mountain ranges that we see, these, these old rocks that were sitting way down there below before, now they start to rise. I'm Matt Cornell, and we're here in Highlight Canyon. Highlight Canyon is a recreation area outside of Bozeman, Montana, that happens to provide a lot of good ice climbing. Highlight, here's Highlight, right? A return to a more steeply subducting slab, and volcanism takes off again. A long time ago, a big volcano erupted and spewed all this ash and dirt and lava all over creation. And then glaciers carved it all out to have all these formations we now know. Old volcanoes, rivers and glaciers have cut right into the heart of the old volcano. We can literally see the plumbing system. So the groundwater is recharged, you know, from high up in those mountains and it's flowing down, just following its natural path. And it hits those, what are called aquatards, and it hits those impermeable layers and it make its way out to the cliff face, right? Throughout the canyon, you get a lot of different bands of rock. Sometimes you'll have pumice, sometimes you'll have and to site basalt, other times you'll just have volcanic mud flows. It can be really loose, almost mud-like. You can swing your tool into it. Holds are always popping off. And it's all really porous, so it allows the ice to bond really well. And you get ice flowing just about anywhere it can, which makes it really special. Mixed climbing is when you're using your ice tools and crampons to climb the rock in order to gain ice higher up. If you're on the basalt, it can be really skatey, 
hard to find the hold. Going to spots and recreation areas gives you that sense of connection. You feel the energy of the mountains and you get to interact with them and you realize how special these places are and what they really mean and the resources they offer the community. I, I feel very connected to nature when I rock climb, especially when I free solo. I can really feel the wind and hear the birds. <laughs> can you leave again? <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> There's an idea that, you know, this is, the earth is forever and we're not, we can't damage it. Well, we can damage it. You know, we can damage it aesthetically. We can damage it and do environmental damage. We play a role in that, right? I mean, climbers absolutely do. It's really important to be aware of the impact we have 